Hi, my name is Ashley, and today I'm going to be tackling the theme for this week, systemic racism and overt racism. What's the distinction, and why does it matter? First, I think it's important to kind of give you an understanding of where I'm coming from when I'm talking about racism, because I think there's a lot of different definitions, and different people have different ways to talk about racism, and especially the specific types. Okay. First thing I want to say is that racism is permanent. It's not going anywhere. Considering the United States history specifically, right, we're a, a nation built, right, uh, as a result of racism, right? Now there's other institutions that intersect into that, but racism is definitely one of them. Um, so yes, that means that even though we people of color can vote, can go to college, we have a black president, right? That doesn't mean that racism is going to go away because of those those events or, or, uh, or legalities that have been passed. Racism is permanent because power is permanent. So while our understanding of racism may change over time, it doesn't disappear entirely. But it doesn't mean resistance is futile, though, right? Because resistance is also a form of power. So when I mean power, I mean a productive force that can either be oppressive or transformative for, for people in society at a particular historical moment in time. Right, so racism is permanent. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that racism is produced through and on our bodies. Right? It's not solely about white people or bodies marked as white that uh, come to the come to the conclusion that they ideologically just don't like people of color because of the color of their skin. Right? It's not just about that particular facet of racism that keeps racism alive. People of color also have a role to play, primarily through our participation in other forms of systemic oppression, classism, sexism, homophobia, right? Those are, those are specific um, systems that come together to create racism as we know it. Um, but it definitely, our, we're not exempt from our role. We all have a role to play um, in this idea of racism. Right now, our, our roles that we play are going to be different depending on the body um, that you're in. But to realize that it's not it's not just one group of people doing it to another. We all have a role to play. So I think that's important, which is why I emphasize it. Right. So we have <clears throat> racism. Is, racism is permanent, and we have that racism is produced on all our bodies. Okay. The third thing I think is important to talk about is that racism is not supposed to be a comfy, feel-good conversation. We aren't talking about unicorns and rainbows and cotton candy and clouds in the sky. We're talking about the ways that people's lives are materially um, impacted in devastating ways right? because racism exists. So there's a social stigma tied to this idea of wanting to have a conversation about race and or racism. Um, and it, it makes me so angry. I am legitimately angry because I think that this is something that we should talk about. I struggled. Like, why can't we have this conversation? Something that affects everybody's life, not just people of color, right? Everybody's life is affected as a result of this, this form of systemic oppression. So why do we want to talk about it? Especially when I would talk to white people about it, I would always say, I'm not trying to take anything from you, but you're trying to take my voice and my lived experience away from me, right? So now we have a problem because now I can't have these conversations about the ways that my life is affected as a result of race and racism in the United States. Um, but that's what I realized. To them, for, for some people, for some white people particularly who hold white privilege, I am taking something from them, right? I'm taking their comfort. I'm threatening their privilege, right? The comfortability of, of hiding or, main, or living in a white privilege without ever having to think about anything um, besides what they've ever known. Um, so having these conversations aren't supposed to be easy or comfortable for anybody involved, myself included. These conversations are hard to have, but they are important to have because they continue to impact and affect how people live their everyday lives. Okay. So talking about racism isn't comfortable and it'll never be comfortable. So be comfortable with the idea of you're going to always be uncomfortable when you have these conversations. So racism is permanent, racism is produced through and on our bodies, and racism is not a comfy conversation to have. Right? And so that kind of is going to transition into my kind of 
basic, basic understanding of overt racism and systemic racism. Overt racism, I generally think of um, when things, events, conversations, actions, they happen and you can point to it and have that aha moment, that aha racism moment where you can literally point it out, right? So someone calling me a nigger, right? Or someone of Arabic, Middle Eastern descent being called a terrorist, right? Those are examples of overt racism because it's coming out of someone's mouth and I can aha, that's racist, right? That, that aha moment is what I typically use to make a, a, a subtle distinction between systemic and overt racism, right? So the intentions of overt racism, to me at least, um, are for all intents and purposes explicitly clear, right? It's clear cut. But then again, at the same time, it's difficult to even have this conversation about the distinctions between overt and systemic because depending on who you are, those aha racism moments that I can point out as a person of color moving through the world, right, may not be so clear to other people, right, whether it be other people of color or white people, right. Um, so it, it's important to definitely understand that the distinctions between these two types are not um, distinctly categorized and separated from each other. They overlap. They bleed into each other, right, depending on who you are and how you're interpreting the situation. Um, and so that kind of leads into systemic racism. Um, when I think of systemic racism, it's a general reference to how people of color are, dis are discriminated, misrepresented, and disadvantaged through subtle and silent means, right? Subtle and silent means. So in other words, racism is reproduced in nu numerous ways through social institutions, social institutions and the regulatory practices, right? Education, government, politics, the healthcare system, Right, those those are some of the the, the main institutions, right, um, that exist in our society. So racism is embedded in that um, and affects people's lives without people really even understanding at first what's actually happening. Okay, so saying, so for example, right, black people not being allowed to go to college, right, being forced to live in certain areas, not having the right to vote. Right, those those things that we could maybe describe as overt are systemic in the way that they are fused into um, again those social institutions. So the legal system, right? There are there were laws at particular points in time against people of color doing specific things, right? It's systemic, and it, a lot of those a lot of those laws again from state to state. Some of those racist laws. Right? They, they're still in the state, state's constitutions. So it's important to think about systemically the way things happen um, and are supposed to be, right? but are really just <laughs> legal ways or ways to make it harder to say that, aha, that's a racist, that's a racist thing. Now again, for me, it's easy for me to do that because of the education I have, but it's not always clear for everyone. So hope, hopefully I've given you some kind of basic understanding of the distinction that I make between systemic and overt racism, and just racism, um, some thoughts about racism in general. Bye.